is Ben Darach, right? And that's the Darach burner, right? And these are the various positions. All right, all right. I'll take over now. Here is the starting line. There. Right. Right. Now, Fiona stays behind Snedden until she sees which road he's taken. The shorter but more difficult route... Or the longer but easier one. But I thought you said that was a Darek burn. Oh. The scissors. I think we're confusing the Sheila. But it's self-explanatory. I really don't think she understands. You don't understand, do you? Go on, admit it! Don't shout at me! Ah, what do they teach them in school these days? <laughs> fascinating, Mrs. Mack, most fascinating. What is Minister? Uh, this catalogue, it has a synopsis of all the plays available. Oh, well, I've already made my choice. Uh, I'm aware of that. How's the dramatic society coming along, anyway? Oh, far too many other things on my mind, as you very well know. Ah, yes, but you mustn't sacrifice all your other interests for the sake of detection. All the great detectives had their recreations. Sherlock Holmes had his violin, Miss Marple had a knitting. Well, look, it isn't my detection activities which have prevented me from pursuing my dramatic work. No, that's another task. One, I need hardly add, for the good of the community. You need hardly add what? Look, I'm not in a position to divulge any information. But surely... Th Look, I've given my word. You wouldn't want me to break that now, would you? Uh, not at all. But I do recall that you once accused me of being a party to a conspiracy of silence. I did. What about it? You seem to have joined one yourself. Oh. As I was explaining, when Fiona sees which road Snedden has taken, she loads herself and the horse into a horse box, which takes her to the last lap position. Here. Then I take up the race from there to the finish, which is here. Correct. Now, two kids will be waiting here with their CB radios. Sheila will be waiting not far away from the first marker, where two stewards will be watching. And another kid and her radio will keep us in touch with Snedden's progress. Yes, but we don't want to get back too far ahead of Snedden, otherwise we're going to give the show away. Mm. And since neither of us are very experienced riders, Carol, we won't be able to hold our lead for the rest of the race. So I'll pull off the road and stay hidden until Snedden passes. Then we'll notify you and Mrs. Mack to stand by. Mrs. Mack? You're joking. Oh, it's just a ploy to keep her out of the way. I mean, reserve that chance. Then Carol takes up the race until she reaches you, and you finish it. Well? It might just work. It is fraud, of course, but since I don't stand to gain anything, Snedden's going to be the only loser. Oh, there is one thing that I've got to insist on. What? My mother can't know about any of this. Oh, that may be difficult. Yeah, well, that's the way it's got to be. She's got very definite ideas about how a lady laird should behave. I'm afraid they're a bit different from mine. Excuse me, darling. No, oh, thanks. Quite a lot of water around. Aye, it stops raining sometimes. I meant on the estate. Must be half a dozen lockings. Worthwhile stocking any of them, do you think? One of them was, but we lost all the fish. Disease. Something like that. Still, if you want to try again. No, no. I'll leave it to your judgment. I haven't come here to tell you how to do your job. I hope you don't think I have. Oh, it never occurred to me for a minute. In fact, having you and Mrs. Shaw here has been quite instructive. Instructive? I will, when Mrs. Shaw first came, I was thinking there can't be too many husbands who would trust their wives away from them for so long. Or too many wives who would trust their husbands. Oh, that too, Mrs. Russell, that too. I think you exaggerate the dangers of separation. Well, maybe. I'm sort of ignorant in matters like that. Well, being apart is a common enough thing in a lot of jobs. But it can still lead to divorce, especially among... Among entertainers, Mr. Snedden. Well, it's just what I've read in the papers. Well... I won't deny that the music business is a bit dodgy as far as marriage is concerned. Not to Sally and me. Well, that's nice to hear. It's heartwarming to meet a young couple who trust each other so much. Well, let's just see it fixed, Mrs. Getting on. Archie, I've been hearing rather a lot of talk about the body that was found on the moors. There appears to be some suggestion that it was Mr. McBain, who used to live up beyond Ardvane. I heard that myself. Did you know him? Oh, I, 
And these stories are a load of rubbish. You seem very sure. Well, sure, I'm sure. Everybody knows Roddy McBain was drowned in the loch. Oh, Sergeant Murray doesn't seem to know it. Well, you know what policemen are like. Always out to make a name for themselves so they can get promoted. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Ah, oh, well, I would. Remember that time your brooch got nicked and I was the prime suspect? Uh, yes, quite. Well, I'm sure that isn't Sergeant Murray's motivation. He's always seemed happy enough in Ochtan. Besides, he's rather close to retirement age to be worrying about promotion. I suppose that's true enough. But it's a different matter for big ears. Big ears? Ah, that young Constable McPhee. He'll have put Murray up to this. Oh, he's real ambitious, that one. Considers himself far too good for a one-eyed place like this. You don't believe that McBain was murdered, then? Mrs Cunningham, there was only one McBain likely to get murdered. And Roddy McBain got himself drowned before he could do her in. Her being... Linda, his wife. Have you uh, made any progress in your investigations, Mrs Mack? From certain inquiries I've been making in the village, I have arrived at certain conclusions. May I ask what they are? Mm -hmm. First... I will present you with my chain of reasoning. That sounds most interesting. Now, uh, one. Everybody in Dundarroch seemed very fond of Linda McBain. Oh, that's true. That's very true. <laughs> Two. Especially the men. Well, I suppose you could say that some of the women were a wee bit jealous of her. She was a, a very pretty young lady. Mm -hmm. You sound as though you're a bit smitten with her yourself. Oh, oh no, Mrs. Mack. She was a married woman. I would never allow myself to become fond of a married oh, woman. Oh, very laudable. But you would say that, wouldn't you, under interrogation? Uh, Mrs. Mack, you can't be suggesting... I'm suggesting I... nothing. But in a murder inquiry, every avenue has to be explored. But I only know what I've been told. When you have eliminated the possible, then the solution lies with the impossible, Sherlock Holmes. You can't make me a suspect. Not yet. I haven't eliminated all the possibles. Now, her husband treated her very badly, didn't he? Abominably. So I've been told. Well, that could have turned her against him. Oh, I don't think so. No, she was quite devoted to him. It, so I heard. Well, you mean she pretended to be? No, no I didn't. In reality, that. she had a lover. And once we find out who he was, then we have our murderer. I'm sure this you're wrong. This Mr. Murdoch has all the hallmarks of a crime patronal. Come on, Mr. Turnbull, time for your bath. Ah, you watch yourself this time, Willie. You watch your stitches. visiting town yet? Nice we nurse that. Help her a wee bit of Highland charm. Oh, aye. You a married man, too? Mind if I sit down? Sure. It's nice of you to come and see me. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I should have come before now. Oh, there's no obligation. Friends should never feel obliged. Besides, I'm glad you came. Gives me the chance to say thanks. For what? Well, if you hadn't come in when you did, those guys could have killed me. <laughs> they thought maybe I was unconscious. Didn't know you were there. You didn't tell the police then? But I saw them. For a long time, I really wasn't sure. I thought maybe I'd imagined that you were there, that you'd seen the guys. I thought I'd dreamt it all up. I've never been 100% certain till right now. Jimmy, I'm sorry. What don't be? Look, I don't blame you for not having a go at them. That's common sense. I mean, I was the stupid one. It's just that afterwards, you told the police, you told everyone, you never saw a thing, couldn't identify them. I never figured you for a coward, Eddie.
Give Sheila my regards. I know what Mr. Sneddon's doing to you is terrible, but don't let it prey on your mind. I can't help it. It's not just me that he's putting in danger. It could be worse for Harry, much worse. He's very dependent on me, Mrs. Russell, and he has a far higher opinion of me than I deserve. Must be nice to have someone put you on a pedestal. <laughs> It's a long way to fall if you come off it. Maybe the best thing would be if you both left. We can't, until this damn race is over. Although I do feel like running away. Oh, don't do that. I won't. I wouldn't risk Harry's life by doing that. His life? Mm-hmm, just that. He's undergoing treatment for heroin addiction. Sorry, I didn't know. And that's why I can't leave him. He needs my support to stay away from drugs, because if he doesn't, he will die. It's as simple as that. I feel like slipping rat poison into Sneddon's tea. Oh, I'll handle that myself. I'll tell Harry about me and Jimmy Blair. <laughs> Tomorrow's a big day, then. You know it is. I had hoped that your own good sense would have made you change your mind about racing, but I can see that isn't going to happen. You're wrong, you know, Mum. I did get a fright when I had those pains. I just feel that I can't let the people of Glendarroch down. You aren't going to race, and that's all there is to it. Ah. Uh, you may own the estate. But you own the horses. That's right. I'm one step ahead of you, Mum. But I will borrow any nag or pony trekker that can walk, and I'm going to go through with it. There'll be no need for that. I'm going to take your place. Oh, so you've nearly finished it. Well, it's so lacking in substance, it might almost be read at a glance. Are you sure you want to do this play, Mrs. Mack? I am adamant, and as for it lacking in substance, I happen to think it's a masterpiece. Uh, a trifle out of date, perhaps? Look, it contains eternal verities, Minister, and truth is never out of date. Then I must have failed to notice them. They're subtly embedded in the text. You should have noticed them. Perhaps. Mm. The younger parts will be hard to cast from those who have expressed an interest in joining the society. The young girl... Fresh from convent school, for instance. Oh, I think I've managed to persuade Carol Mackay to take that part. Uh, Carol, but uh, I would have thought she was rather too uh, down to earth for the part. Well, since I'll be playing the girl's aunt, she'll have my support, won't she? Uh, you'll be playing her aunt. Lady Hermione, yes. But uh, she's only... Uh... Yes, Minister. Well, I, I mean, I, I rather question the wisdom of it, uh, her age. She's only 32. Minister, it's well seen that you're unfamiliar with theatrical conventions. Shakespeare wrote Juliet for Romeo and Juliet when she was only 14 years old, and some of the most highly praised performances were played by actresses who were distinctly mature. As you say. Well, I hope you're not considering me for either of the parts of the two young men. No, you need have no fears on that score. Good. Though I may feel compelled to cast Mr. Murdoch in one of them. No, no, no. You will be perfect in the part of the old grandfather. He, he's over 80. No, don't worry about that. Make up will take care of it. True. Its judicious application might just make me look old enough. Archie! It's all settled. Oh, thank patience for that. When you said you were going to let your mother have her own way, I thought, well, that's that. You shouldn't have played jokes like that other folk. I wasn't joking, Archie. I meant it. But you didn't do it. Well, as a matter of fact, I did, yes. Uh, uh, what does that mean? Well, it means that my mother is going to substitute for me in the race. Oh, no. I'm going to have to tell everybody the plan's off. No, Archie, don't bother. Mum will be arriving to start the race at 11.30. Past 11. How about here? That's a quarter of an hour after the race has started. Quarter of one? I've. You've done it again. I do not wearing the 
uniform, I take it this isn't an official visit. Well, uh, it isn't, it isn't. I want to talk to you about the attack on your son. Oh, that sounds pretty official to me. But isn't that the business of the Glasgow police? Oh, I suppose it is. But the answer isn't in Glasgow, is it? It's in Glendarroch. Is it? You know it is. Look, the owner of the shop your son worked in can identify the men who tried to extort protection money from him. But that doesn't prove they're the same ones who attacked Jimmy. No, we need someone who saw them on the premises to prove that. Since nobody did, that is that. Not what the CID think. Why? Oh, eh? Who do they think saw them? Who do you think? Look, every time I ask you a question, you ask it back to me. I mean, this is silly, isn't it? I don't think anything. That's why I asked you. If whoever it was would admit to seeing them, the police could pull them in tomorrow. Fine! So why are you telling me all this? Oh, just for your information. I don't suppose you know any reason why Eddie Ramsey would be glad to hear that Jimmy got hurt. Take a seat, Sheila. I'm afraid I can't offer you coffee and biscuits. Mrs. Mack has just popped out and she regards any violation of her larder as a capital offence. That's all right. It's good of you to see me. <laughs> Not at all. Now, what's it all about? Well, I have to talk to somebody and you're the only person I can discuss it with. I'd be only too delighted, of course, but uh, wouldn't Eddie be better? Eddie's part of the problem. You see, I've been accepted for the Open University. Congratulations. I know how upset you were at having to abandon your school studies. But will you be taking a degree? I would like to take a BA in Arts and Social Studies. That sounds most impressive. But uh, what's the problem? I'm not sure if I should take the course. Why ever not? Eddie. But surely he'd be only too delighted. He would feel that he had to support me. But that would be because of his sense of guilt. You see, he's always felt bad about being the cause of me leaving school when I did. He was partly to blame, yes. Yes, but feeling bad isn't the same as wanting me to take them up again. I don't really see that that follows. Eddie is really very intelligent. But he never had any encouragement to take any qualifications. You know what his home background was like. Indeed, uh, I imagine he had active discouragement. Well, the fact that I went further at school than he did separates us already. Though neither of us would admit it to the other. Oh, I think you should go ahead and take the course. The situation isn't as bad as you imagine, and there's a very real danger that you yourself might finish up resenting Eddie for holding you back. That thought had crossed my mind. I rather imagined it had. So, you'll take the course? Yes. As I believe you would have, no matter what I said. Ah, uh, well, I suppose I should give some thought to repairing that ceiling. Some serious thought. Fiona been getting at you? A few gentle hints. Mind you, since she was thinking on taking on Joe MacDonald to help me, eh, before you mess things up, that is, maybe she'd consider taking on somebody else, hmm? Fantasizing as usual? Oh, no, I mean, that's a really big repair job, Lorna. You and Effie must have worked like navvies bringing that ceiling down. Oh, we only did it for you. Oh, aye. And if you hadn't, I'd be really badly off, wouldn't I? I mean, I'd have a, a man to give me a hand. Hardly anything to do. <laughs> Who needs friends like you two? Don't worry. We won't be helping you again. No, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> That was a long session you had with Mrs. Cunningham this morning. Aye, ah, well, it's a while since we had a chat. She must have been missing my words of wisdom. And on what uh, weighty matters were you pontificating this time? Oh, this, that, the other. Really? Exciting stuff, eh? If you really must know, Lorna, she was asking my opinion about the body we dug up on the moor. She wondered if it was Roddy McBain's. Uh, you, of course, uh, gave her your opinion. Well, of course I did. I told her I was sure it wasn't Roddy's. What I didn't tell her was that if it had been, then I know who my chief suspect would be. <laughs> and she would be really upset if she knew who that was. Hi. 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 I've, um... 
I've been thinking about that conversation we had this morning with Snedden. About how much we trust each other. Yeah. I've been thinking about it myself. We have always been honest with each other, haven't we? I've always tried to be. But, uh, well, there were times when I didn't know very well what I was doing. Oh, oh that's all in the past now. You're over it. And I'm here to see that you stay that way. But there's something I think you should know. About me and Jimmy. Gray. Before you say anything, Sal, there's something I have to tell you. And it's something I don't think you'll want to hear. When you were here, and I was in America, I got involved with someone else. It wasn't supposed to happen, but it did. <sighs> well, don't you have anything to say? Uh, yes. We're quits. <laughs> 